After I spent a growing season in this half a tennis court sized garden, which grew enough food for four people to have their five a day every single day of the year, there's three things that stood out in terms of what really contributed to making it as self-sufficient as possible. The first one, of course, comes down to, to the health of the soil. The last one is, is a fun one. It's to do with the kitchen, and I'll be talking about that in a different video. But the one in the middle, it's, it's not a secret. It's a very kind of simple concept. It's a planting method that I'm sure you've heard of. But after I did a bit of calculation, I worked out that, in essence, it doubled the yield of this garden. So that means from this space, instead of providing enough food for two people, it doubled it to provide enough food for four people. And that simple method is succession planting. And I'm gonna be sharing with you in this video all of my top tips, even if you're a beginner, even if you're just starting out, for you to be able to get as much from your space as possible. One slightly confusing point about succession planting is that it covers two different approaches. One is kind of a little bit often where you space out the planting of a particular crop over a year, so you don't get as many glunts, which is great, and I use that in this garden last growing season. But this video is focusing on succession planting where once a crop is removed from a space, another crop occupies it as soon as possible. The goal is simple with succession planting. You wanna have crops growing in the ground for as long as possible. So a very simple example is after I harvested my fava beans and my Napa cabbage, I then put in my leeks, which are below me right now. And I can go down, there you go. A leak. Now there's a little magic to succession planting that allows you to extend your growing season because most of the time it's succession transplanting. There's, you can either transplant things or you can sow something directly as soon as something has been harvested. When you transplant something, you get to extend your season without having more time. And the way that that happens is that you start off seedlings undercover four to six weeks before the kind of the space is going to be clear. So four to six weeks later, when you harvest, you immediately put in the next crop and it's got a month and a half of growth already. That's how you can start to condense and pack in as much food as possible during the season. And for colder climates and climates that have a shorter growing season, for example, my last average frost date is mid-May and my first one is around mid-October, that four to six weeks of getting that maturity before you put it in the ground can completely make the difference between a bumper harvest and a total failure. To do this, it does require some organization, but that's why I've made this video, to hopefully make it as simple as possible. Now, before I share the beginner-friendly technique for starting off succession planting, if you want to see it in action, you can see it in my upcoming book, The Self-Sufficiency Garden. It's kind of why I'm making this video, but this is a month by month approach and uh, it shows you everything from March right throughout the growing year and at the start of each month it gives you a, a list of things to sow, mostly in modules and most of those once you get into April and May are going to be used for succession as soon as one of the first crops is harvested that will then replace it. In this book I've put in as much no nonsense, simple growing advice for you to get maximum efficiency from a growing space. Even if you've got a small garden, the book shows you the average yields that you can expect per plant. So you can start to plan ahead and really realize what the potential of your growing space is. And so this comes out on the 7th of March here in the UK. There's a pre-order link down below and it also comes out in May over in America. So let's look at that beginner friendly technique to succession planting. It's not going to be quite as high yielding as the, the full full hog version, but it is gonna make a significant impact. And it's a concept that I came up with, and I don't really know what the best term is, but the closest I've got to is called a polyculture medley. And it works like this. Every three to four weeks, you sow an assortment of different crops that are suitable for starting off at that time of year. Don't worry, I'm gonna be sharing that in this video. The idea is when you then harvest something, you're always going to have seedlings ready to plug that gap. So it's less about one crop out, another crop in. It's more of a case of one crop out or a bit of a crop out, and you can put a few different things in. 
hence why the polyculture medley. So what you do on your calendar is you mark at least one date a month and that's the day that you sow your polyculture medley. It'll be a selection of different crops. If you've got a smaller garden, something like my HR10 module trays will be perfect because you'll just get 10 clumps or 10 seedlings of each individual plant. And as gaps naturally appear, you already have a selection of seedlings that can go in and plug that gap that are suitable for growing at that time of year. The reason why polyculture medley is very suitable for those of you just starting out is because the, the main version of succession planting, i.e. a monthly planting plan, requires you to estimate when things are going to be finished, when plants or crops are going to be over. And if you don't have much growing experience, it can be a little bit challenging to work that out. So instead, this is a little bit more of a reactionary approach to gaps emerging, but it still follows the same principle of succession. You've got a crop out, something new goes in, you get to maximize the yields from your garden. As well as starting off things in modules, there's also going to be crops for quite a few of the months that are going to be suitable for direct sowing. So if you're thinking, oh no, I don't actually maybe have enough seedlings left over, don't worry, there's also things that you can direct sow and still enjoy succession planting. Here's just a little example of a polyculture medley in action. It's the month of August, you've harvested your fennel, not all of it, maybe like a couple of big fennel bulbs and there's a bit of space and so you might transplant a couple of pack choy seedlings and you might also direct sow a row of winter radish very simple and you're going to get some nice food one of my favorite things about the polyculture medley is that it brings in additional benefits by growing lots of different things together you're going to suffer from less pest and disease issues it's going to help with the health of your soil and it allows you to get creative it allows you to think okay there's kind of a smaller gap here maybe i could transplant one of the polyculture medley crops that's going to grow taller maybe something like spring onions or leeks versus a space that might be a little bit more open but shaded and that would be a great space to transplant leafy greens and salads. On the screen now, I'm running through the months from April to September, showing you all of the crops that are suitable for sowing in modules that month, for succession planting a few weeks down the line, or sowing direct. I'm including both undercover and outside, and this is to match a growing season where the last average frost date is mid-May and the first frost date is around mid-October. So feel free to pause and make a note of all of the things that you can do each month so you can easily reference it during the growing season to start off your polyculture medley. Now another benefit of succession planting, whatever method you choose, is that you're going to have more than one type of crop growing in the exact same space over a growing season. And so there's already a bit of diversity, a bit of rotation. You don't have to worry about crop rotation. I feel that that can make things quite complicated, especially in smaller spaces when you just have to think outside the box all the time. So as long as you add a good kind of like three centimeter or an inch mulch of compost some point during the year, you'll be able to maintain a, a healthy and a fertile soil, then you shouldn't have to worry too much about excessive pest and disease issues. When you have a couple of growing seasons under the belt and you start to work out how long it takes things to come into harvest, you can then start looking at the more advanced methods of succession planting. I've done many a video about this, but it is the monthly planting plan. I do have a really important tip for year round production, which I'm gonna share right after I give a nutshell description of what the monthly planting plan is. Instead of creating a planting plan where on one sheet of paper you have an overview of the year, you create a plan for every single month. So you start off with a bird's eye diagram of your garden and then you print off say 12 copies for the 12 months of the year and then you just show the changes happening every single month. So that could look like in March you've got purple sprouting broccoli in one bed, then in April you finished harvesting that, that comes out and then the next crop comes in which could be carrots and then in May that bed is showing carrots. So it's just telling you the core changes that are happening in your garden at any specific period during the growing season. By splitting your plan into monthly segments it brings a few key benefits. The best one is it saves a lot of time. I spent a couple of days over December, just kind of, I did one day, I made a plan over the month, I slept on it, came back, and I made just a few adjustments. That's all I had to do. And then during the whole growing season, 
I had a near accurate representation of what was going on at any one point in time in the garden because I would make notes like when things would come out maybe in the mid month or the late month. And so all I had to do during the growing season is follow that plan. I didn't have to make hard decisions or anything. I just needed to make sure I followed that plan and I looked after the plants and that saved a huge amount of time. It also allows you to easily see what changes are coming up over the next month or two. If you try and put all of that detail on a single bit of paper, it's really easy to miss pieces of information. And so you can look ahead, say it's a month of June, you can look ahead and see what's gonna be happening in July and August. You've already run through the growing season in your head. It's just time for you to do it out in practice. There's also more space on each monthly plan to add additional information if you want to annotate about a particular variety or maybe give a rough estimation of how many modules or pots that you want to start in preparation. It just gives you a little bit more leeway to, to add that depth because the more, the more detail that you have up front, the easier it's gonna be during the growing season. Of course, we are at the mercy of mother nature, not everything goes to plan, but because I was working on the book, I really wanted to test it. So I followed it by the letter and uh, the garden was a big success. I have found even if you have challenging times like last year during the start of the growing season, we had eight weeks of no rain. And then we had from July onwards, a very kind of cool, wet summer. I still followed the succession plan and I'd say 95% of the timings were bang on. Anything else was a week or two adjustment. And so it still fitted that monthly plan. And uh, it was nice. It was nice to just see it all come together, even though the conditions weren't favorable. Now for that one tip that really, really helps with year round production. This is about balancing your yields over the year as much as possible. So you don't have to deal with trying to preserve all of the gluts that you get in summer and autumn. Of course, the one of the other types of succession planting that I mentioned earlier, by staggering out your sowings of a particular crop over say a few weeks or a few months, so it lasts, is a great one to do. And you can implement that even with your staples out in your garden. But my favorite way to ensure year round productivity is to dedicate a greater proportion of the garden to winter vegetables. Because once they've grown and matured, they just sit there as like a your own greengrocer that you can access right throughout winter. You don't have to spend ages trying to preserve them. If you grow in a climate that experiences very deep freezes or lots of snowfall, it will make harvesting your winter vegetables a little bit trickier. So let me introduce you to a hinged hoop bed. You can watch this video here. This is a game changer for harvesting vegetables over winter and for self-sufficiency, especially for smaller gardens that don't have a polytunnel. So give it a watch.